This is session three of stage two of our Road to Quran Mastery series. We're still learning about the Noon Sakina. Last time, we started discussing the second skill. And this time in session three, we're still learning about Idram, since this is one of the most important and common Tajweed skills when you recite the Quran. So let's get started. Last time we started talking about idram, which means merging or fusing. And we learned that when noon is followed by these six letters, there could be one of two things happening. Last time we discussed idram bila runna, for the ra and the lam. When the noon is completely merged into the ra and lam, and as a result, these two letters get Shadda on top. And today, we'll talk about the second result, which is Ghunna. And before we move any further into our lesson today, we must first have a good understanding of what Ghunna means and how to pronounce it. So first, to pronounce the letter Noon, or more precisely, the sound N, you need to do two actions with your articulators. First, you need to place your tip of the tongue at the alveolar ridge. Second, you will let air escape through your nasal cavity or nostrils. So these are the two characteristics of pronouncing the noon, a tongue placement and air coming out of your nostrils. That's why when you hold your nose and thus blocking the nostrils, you will not be able to pronounce the na sound properly. And it would sound like that. Na. Na. So this second characteristic of noon and this air coming out of your nostrils is what we call runne. And these are the two characteristics of pronouncing the noon in Arabic. And when merging the noon with one of the four letters that we talked about before, one of these characteristics disappears, or rather, they are completely merged into the following letter. And the only thing that remains behind is the runna. So when noon sakena is followed by ya, noon, mim, and wow, then you merge the noon completely with the letter that follows it. And as a result, you will pronounce the letter with runne, or rather, while letting air out of your nostrils. That takes about two harakat, or about one second. Like these examples. And notice that I will pronounce these examples slower than usual, so that you get the idea of idram. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ وَإِنْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَلَكِنْ مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَحِيرَةٍ وَلَا سَائِبَةٍ وَلَا وَصِيلَةٍ وَلَا حَامٍ وَلَكِنْ So in this first example, we see that the noon sakina was followed by ya. And that's why we said, يقول. And this is what we call runna of two harakat. The following example, the noon was followed by meem. And that's why we said, وَإِمِّن So the noon is completely gone and the only thing that remains behind is its runna. In the following two examples, the noon sakina came in a form of tanween. In this example, there were two cases of idram, one after the other. Ummatan 
واحدة ولكن And in the last example, there were four cases of idgham following one another. That's why idgham is so important because it's very commonly used in the Noble Qur'an. And if you want to know if you are getting the ghunna right, try holding your nose. And if your pronunciation is blocked and became inaudible, then you're doing the ghunna correctly, inshallah. So, idgham means merging or fusing. For noon sakina, it happens when it is followed by one of these six letters. With two of them, ra and lam, you merge and add shadda only to the letters ra and lam. And with the other four letters, you merge and the ghunna of the noon stays for two harakat. And to never forget these letters, these letters form the word yarmaloon. And this way, you will never forget which letters cause the idgham. And now it's time for the recitation of today's lesson. Today's recitation is from the 10th juz, from Surat At-Tawbah. And as you're used to, the positions with idgham will be highlighted with a different color. And towards the end of the recitation, this will no longer be done, and you should apply the rule for yourself. كيف وإن يظهروا عليكم لا يرقبوا فيكم إلا ولا ذمة إلا ولا ذمة يرضونكم بأفواههم وتأبى وتأبى قلوبهم وأكثرهم فاسقون اشتروا بآيات الله ثمنا قليلا فصدوا عن سبيله إنهم ساء ما كانوا يعملون لا يرقبون في مؤمن إلا ولا ذمة إلا ولا ذمة وأولئك هم المعتدون فإن تابوا وأقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة فإخوانكم في الدين ونفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون And now it's time for the challenge questions of this episode. Today's questions are from the 10th Juz. The first question. The Jews said, Ezra is the son of God. And the Christians said, the Messiah is the son of God. These are the statements out of their mouths. They emulate the statements of those who blasphemed before. May God assail them. How deceived they are. The second question. The believing men and believing women are friends of one another. They advocate virtue, forbid evil, perform the prayers, practice charity, and obey God and His Messenger. These, God will have mercy on them. God is noble and wise. Were you able to find the corresponding verses with these translations? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in session 4.